Abdul Ghaffar Khan, the 6th of February 1890 to the 20th of January 1988, nicknamed Fakir e Afghan, lit. Pride of Afghans, Badshah Khan or Baka Khan, King of Chiefs, was a Pashtun independence activist who worked to end the rule of the British Raj. He was a political and spiritual leader known for his nonviolent opposition. He was a lifelong pacifist and devout Muslim. A close friend of Mohandas Gandhi, Baka Khan was nicknamed the Frontier Gandhi in British India by his close associate Amir Chand Bamwal. Baka Khan founded the Kudai Kedmatgar Servants of God movement in 1929. Its success triggered a harsh crackdown by the British Raj against him and his supporters, and they suffered some of the most severe repression of the Indian independence movement. Baka Khan strongly opposed the All India Muslim League's demand for the partition of India. When the Indian National Congress declared its acceptance of the partition plan without consulting the Kudai Kedmatgar leaders, he felt very sad and told the Congress, You have thrown us to the wolves. In June 1947, Khan and other Kudai Kedmatgars declared the Banu Resolution, demanding that the Pashtuns be given a choice to have an independent state of Pashtunistan, composing all Pashtun territories of British India, instead of being made to join Pakistan. However, the British Raj refused to comply with the demand of this resolution. After the partition, Baka Khan pledged allegiance to Pakistan, but was frequently arrested by the Pakistani government between 1948 and 1954. In 1956, he was again arrested for his opposition to the One Unit Programme, under which the government announced its plan to merge all provinces of West Pakistan into a single province. Khan was jailed or in exile during much of the 1960s and 1970s. Upon his death in 1988 in Peshawar under house arrest, following his will, he was buried at his house in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Tens of thousands of mourners attended his funeral, marching through the Khyber Pass from Peshawar to Jalalabad. It was marred by two bomb explosions that killed 15 people. Despite the heavy fighting at the time during the Soviet-Afghan War, both sides, namely the Communist Army and the Mujahideen, declared a ceasefire to allow Khan's burial. <laughs> Early years Baka Khan was born on 6 February 1890 into a generally peaceful and prosperous Pashtun family from Utmanzai in the Peshawar Valley of British India. His father, Baram Khan, was a landowner in the area commonly referred to as Hashtnagar. Baka Khan was the second son of Baram to attend the British-run Edwards Mission School, the only fully functioning school in the region run by missionaries. At school the young Baka Khan did well in his studies, and was inspired by his mentor Reverend Wigram to see the importance of education in service to the community. In his tenth and final year of high school, he was offered a highly prestigious commission in the Corps of Guides, a regiment of the British Indian Army. Baka Khan refused the commission after realizing that even guides officers were still second-class citizens in their own country. He resumed his intention of university study, and Reverend Wigram offered him the opportunity to follow his brother, Khan Abdul Jabbar Khan, to study in London. An alumnus of Aligarh Muslim University, Baka Khan eventually received the permission of his father. However, Baka Khan's mother wasn't willing to let another son go to London, so Baka Khan began working on his father's lands, attempting to discern what more he might do with his life. In 1910, at the age of 20, Khan opened a mosque school in his hometown of Utmanzai. In 1911, he joined independence movement of the Pashtun independence activist Haji Sahib of Tarangzai. However, in 1915, the British authorities banned his mosque school. Having witnessed the repeated failure of revolts against the British Raj, Khan decided that social activism and reform would be more beneficial for the Pashtuns. This led to the formation of Anjuman e Isla e Afghania, Anjuman Azlov Afghan Reform Society. In 1921, and the youth movement Pax, Tun Jirga, Peace Down Jirga, Pashtun Assembly, in 1927. After Khan's return from the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca in May 1928, he founded the Pashto language monthly political journal Pax, Tun, Peace Down Pashtun. Finally, in November 1929, Khan founded the Kudai Kedmatgar, Kachdai Kachimtar, Servants of God, movement, whose success triggered a harsh crackdown by the British authorities against him and his supporters. They suffered some of the most severe repression of the Indian independence movement from the British Raj. Topic: 
Badshah Khan. In response to his inability to continue his own education, Baka Khan turned to helping others start theirs. Like many such regions of the world, the strategic importance of the newly formed Northwest Frontier Province now Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan as a buffer for the British Raj from Russian influence was of little benefit to its residents. The oppression of the British, the repression of the mullahs, and an ancient culture of violence and vendetta prompted Baka Khan to want to serve and uplift his fellow men and women by means of education. At 20 years of age, Baka Khan opened his first school in Utmanzai. It was an instant success and he was soon invited into a larger circle of progressively minded reformers. While he faced much opposition and personal difficulties, Baka Khan Khan worked tirelessly to organize and raise the consciousness of his fellow Pushtuns. Between 1915 and 1918 he visited 500 villages in all part of the settled districts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. It was in this frenzied activity that he had come to be known as Badshah Baka Khan, King of Chiefs, being a secular Muslim he did not believe in religious divisions. He married his first wife Maharkanda in 1912, she was a daughter of Yar Muhammad Khan of the Kinankel clan of the Mohammadzai tribe of Razar, a village adjacent to Utmanzai. They had a son in 1913, Abdul Ghani Khan, who would become a noted artist and poet. Subsequently, they had another son, Abdul Wali Khan the 17th of January 1917, and daughter, Sardaro. Maharkanda died during the 1918 influenza epidemic. In 1920, Baka Khan remarried, his new wife, Nambada, was a cousin of his first wife and the daughter of Sultan Muhammad Khan of Razar. She bore him a daughter, Mahar Taj the 25th of May 1921 to the 29th of April 2012, and a son, Abdul Ali Khan the 20th of August 1922 to the 19th of February 1997. Tragically, in 1926 Nambada died early as well from a fall down the stairs of the apartment they were staying at in Jerusalem. Topic: Kudai Kedmatgar. In time, Baka Khan's goal came to be the formulation of a united, independent, secular India. To achieve this end, he founded the Kudai Kedmatgar, servants of God, commonly known as the Red Shirts, Sirk Posh, during the 1920s. The Kudai Kedmatgar was founded on a belief in the power of Gandhi's notion of satyagraha, a form of active non-violence as captured in an oath. He told its members, I am going to give you such a weapon that the police and the army will not be able to stand against it. It is the weapon of the Prophet, but you are not aware of it. That weapon is patience and righteousness. No power on earth can stand against it. The organization recruited over 100,000 members and became legendary in opposing and dying at the hands of the British-controlled police and army. Through strikes, political organization and nonviolent opposition, the Kudai Kedmatgar were able to achieve some success and came to dominate the politics of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. His brother, Dr. Khan Abdul Jabbar Khan, known as Dr. Khan Sahib, led the political wing of the movement, and was the chief minister of the province from 1937 and then until 1947 when his government was dismissed by Muhammad Ali Jinnah of the Muslim League. Kissa Kwani Massacre On 23 April 1930, Baka Khan was arrested during protests arising out of the Salt Satyagraha. A crowd of Kudai Kedmatgar gathered in Peshawar's Kissa Kwani Storytellers Bazaar. The British ordered troops to open fire with machine guns on the unarmed crowd, killing an estimated 200-250. The Kudai Kedmatgar members acted in accord with their training in non-violence under Baka Khan, facing bullets as the troops fired on them. Two platoons of the Garhwal Rifles Regiment under Chandra Singh Garhwali refused to fire on the non-violent crowd. They were later court-martialed with heavy punishment, including life imprisonment. <laughs> Baka Khan and the Indian National Congress Baka Khan forged a close, spiritual, and uninhibited friendship with Gandhi, the pioneer of nonviolent mass civil disobedience in India. 
The two had a deep admiration towards each other and worked together closely till 1947. Kudai Kedmatgar, servants of God, agitated and worked cohesively with the Indian National Congress, the leading national organization fighting for independence, of which Baka Khan was a senior and respected member. On several occasions when the Congress seemed to disagree with Gandhi on policy, Baka Khan remained his staunchest ally. In 1931 the Congress offered him the presidency of the party, but he refused saying, I am a simple soldier and Kudai Kedmatgar, and I only want to serve. He remained a member of the Congress Working Committee for many years, resigning only in 1939 because of his differences with the party's war policy. He rejoined the Congress Party when the war policy was revised. Baka Khan was a champion of women's rights and nonviolence. He became a hero in a society dominated by violence, notwithstanding his liberal views, his unswerving faith and obvious bravery led to immense respect. Throughout his life, he never lost faith in his nonviolent methods or in the compatibility of Islam and nonviolence. He recognized as a jihad struggle with only the enemy holding swords. He was closely identified with Gandhi because of his non-violence principles and he is known in India as the Frontier Gandhi. One of his Congress associates was Pandit Amir Chand Bamwal of Peshawar. O oh Pathans! Your house has fallen into ruin. Arise and rebuild it, and remember to what race you belong. The partition Khan strongly opposed the partition of India. Accused as being anti-Muslim by some politicians, Khan was physically assaulted in 1946, leading to his hospitalization in Peshawar. On June 21, 1947, in Banu, Aloya Jirga was held consisting of Baka Khan, the Kudai Kedmatgars, members of the Provincial Assembly, Mirzali Khan Fakir of IPI, and other tribal chiefs, just seven weeks before the partition. The Loya Jirga declared the Banu Resolution, which demanded that the Pashtuns be given a choice to have an independent state of Pashtunistan composing all Pashtun territories of British India, instead of being made to join either India or Pakistan. However, the British Raj refused to comply with the demand of this resolution. The Congress Party refused last ditch compromises to prevent the partition, like the Cabinet Mission Plan and Gandhi's suggestion to offer the position of Prime Minister to Jinnah. As a result, Baka Khan and his followers felt a sense of betrayal by both Pakistan and India. Baka Khan's last words to Gandhi and his erstwhile allies in the Congress party were, You have thrown us to the wolves. When the referendum over accession to Pakistan was held, Baka Khan, the Kudai Kedmatgars and the Indian National Congress party boycotted the referendum. Some have argued that a segment of the population voted was barred from voting. Arrest and exile Baka Khan took the oath of allegiance to the new nation of Pakistan on 23 February 1948 at the first session of the Pakistan Constituent Assembly. He pledged full support to the government and attempted to reconcile with the founder of the new state Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Initial overtures led to a successful meeting in Karachi, however a follow-up meeting in the Kudai Kedmatgar headquarters never materialized, allegedly due to the role of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa chief minister, Abdul Qayyum Khan who warned Jinnah that Baka Khan was plotting his assassination. Following this, Baka Khan formed Pakistan's first national opposition party, on 8 May 1948, the Pakistan Azad Party. The party pledged to play the role of constructive opposition and would be non-communal in its philosophy. However, suspicions of his allegiance persisted and under the new Pakistani government, Baka Khan was placed under house arrest without charge from 1948 till 1954. Released from prison, he gave a speech again on the floor of the Constituent Assembly, this time condemning the massacre of his supporters at Babra. I had to go to prison many a time in the days of the Britishers. Although we were at loggerheads with them, yet their treatment was to some extent tolerant and polite. But the treatment which was meted out to me in this Islamic state of ours was such that I would not even like to mention it to you. He was arrested several times between late 1948 and in 1956 for his opposition to the one-unit scheme. The government attempted in 1958 to reconcile with him and offered him a ministry in the government. After the assassination of his brother, he however refused. 
He remained in prison till 1957 only to be re-arrested in 1958 until an illness in 1964 allowed for his release. In 1962, Baka Khan was named an Amnesty International Prisoner of the Year. Amnesty's statement about him said, His example symbolizes the suffering of upward of a million people all over the world who are prisoners of conscience. In September 1964, the Pakistani authorities allowed him to go to United Kingdom for treatment. During the winter, his doctor advised him to go to United States. He then went into exile to Afghanistan. He returned from exile in December 1972 to popular support, following the establishment of a national Awami Party provincial government in northwest frontier province and Baluchistan. He was arrested by Prime Minister Dufakar Ali Bhutto's government at Moulton in November 1973 and described Bhutto's government as the worst kind of dictatorship. In 1984, increasingly withdrawing from politics he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. He visited India and participated in the centennial celebrations of the Indian National Congress in 1985. He was awarded the Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding in 1967 and later Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian award, in 1987. His final major political challenge was against the Kalabagh Dam project, fearing that the project would damage the Peshawar Valley. His hostility to it would eventually lead to the project being shelved after his death. Baka Khan died in Peshawar under house arrest in 1988 and was buried in his house at Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Over 200,000 mourners attended his funeral, including the Afghan president Muhammad Najibullah. This was a symbolic move by Baka Khan, as this would allow his dream of Pashtun unification to live even after his death. Then Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi went to Peshawar, to pay his tributes to Baka Khan despite the fact that General Zia-ul-Haq attempted to stall his attendance citing security reasons. Additionally, the Indian government declared a five-day period of mourning in his honour, although he had been repeatedly imprisoned and persecuted. Tens of thousands of mourners attended his funeral, described by one commentator as a caravan of peace, carrying a message of love from Pashtuns east of the Khyber to those on the west, marching through the historic Khyber Pass from Peshawar to Jalalabad. A ceasefire was announced in the Afghan Civil War to allow the funeral to take place, even though it was marred by bomb explosions killing 15. Political legacy His eldest son Ghani Khan was a poet, his other son Khan Abdul Wali Khan is the founder and leader of the Awami National Party and was the leader of the opposition in the Pakistan National Assembly. His third son Khan Abdul Ali Khan was non-political and a distinguished educator, and served as vice-chancellor of University of Peshawar. Ali Khan was also the head of Aitchison College, Lahore and Faisal Haq College, Mardin. Muhammad Yahya Education Minister of Khyber Pukhtunkhwa, was the only son-in-law of Baka Khan. Asfandyar Wali Khan is the grandson of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, and leader of the Awami National Party. The party was in power from 2008 to 2013. Salma Adaulajan is the great-grand-niece of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and a member of the Senate of Canada. Baka Khan's political legacy is renowned amongst Pashtuns and Hindus as a leader of a non-violent movement. Within Pakistan, however, the vast majority of society have questioned his stance with the All India Congress over the Muslim League as well as his opposition to Quaid-e-Azam. In particular, people have questioned where Baka Khan's patriotism rests following his insistence that he be buried in Afghanistan after his death and not Pakistan. Film, literature and society In 2008, a documentary, titled The Frontier Gandhi, Badshah Khan, A Torch for Peace, by filmmaker and writer T.C. McLuhan, premiered in New York. The film received the 2009 award for Best Documentary Film at the Middle East International Film Festival see film page. In 1990, a 30 minutes biographical documentary film on Badshah Khan The Majestic Man in English Language which was telecast on Doordarshan National Channel produced by Mr. Abdul Kabir Siddiqui, producer, director from New Delhi who works for Indian National TV Channel. 
In Richard Attenborough's 1982 epic Gandhi, Baka Khan was portrayed by Dilshar Singh. Baka Khan was listed as one of 26 men who changed the world in a recent children's book published in the United States. He also wrote an autobiography 1969, and has been the subject of biographies by Eknath Eswaran and Rajmohan Gandhi C. References. Section, below. His philosophy of Islamic pacifism was recognized by U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, in a speech to American Muslims, in the Indian city of Delhi, the popular Khan market is named in his honor and another market in the Carol Bog of New Delhi is named after him called Ghaffar Market. See also Mirzali Khan Kudai Kedmatgar List of peace activists <laughs> Footnotes <laughs>